Hello friends, welcome. In today's video, I'll be discussing the port state control and the most important questions that are asked related to it. Like, what is the need of port state control? Is port state control recommended or mandatory? And what regulation says that? Types of inspection, various deficiency codes and their meaning. So let's get started. Assembly Resolution 1119 Session 30 Procedure for the Port State Control 2017 clearly explains everything that you need to know about the Port State Control. To understand the need of Port State Control, it's important to realize that Flag State Administration is responsible, that each vessel flying its flag is responsible, that it complies with all the various conventions and their requirements. So in introduction section itself, the resolution clearly explains that it may be difficult for administration to exercise full and continuous control over some ships entitled to fly the flag of its state. For instance, those ships who do not regularly call at a port of flag state. The problem can be and has been partly overcome by appointing inspectors at various foreign ports and or authorizing recognized organization to act on behalf of the flag state administration. Thus, the following control procedures should be regarded as complementary national measures taken by administration of flag states in their country and abroad and are intended to provide assistance to the flag state administration in securing compliance. Basically, flag state cannot be everywhere. Thus, port state control is a help to it. Now, let's get to the next point, which is understanding whether port state control is recommended or mandatory practice. And where is it mentioned? So in the Assembly Resolution 1119, it clearly says that Regulation 19 of Chapter 1, Regulation 6.2 of Chapter 9, Regulation 4 of Chapter 11, Regulation 9 of Chapter 11 Part 2 of SOLAS 1974 as modified by SOLAS Protocol 1988. Then further to it, Article 21 of Load Line Regulation 11 of Annex 1, Regulation 16.9 of Annex 2, Regulation 8 of Annex 3, Regulation 13 of Annex 4, Regulation 8 of Annex 5, and Regulation 10 of Annex 6 of MARPOL, and Article 10 of STCW, Article 12 of Tonnage 1969, Article 11 for AFS 2001, Article 9 for the Ballast Water Management Convention provide for the control procedures to be followed by a party to a relevant convention with regard to foreign ships visiting their ports. The authorities of port states should make effective use of these provisions for the purpose of identifying deficiencies. If any, in such ship may render them substandard and ensuring that remedial measures are taken. But there is a counter question in this regard sometimes. Let's say there is a flag administration which has not ratified any of these conventions. Is port state control going to inspect their ship? And the answer to that is yes. As per the resolution, no more favorable treatment to be given to the ship of countries which are not party to relevant convention. All parties should, as a matter of principle, apply these procedures to the ship of non-parties in order to ensure equivalent surveys and inspections are conducted and an equivalent level of safety and protection of marine environment is ensured. In the second paragraph, it clearly says, if a non-party vessel does not have certificates with regards to SOLAS, load line, MAPOL, AFC, ballast water management certificates or crew certificates as per STCW, still port state control officer must take into account the principles established in the procedures and must satisfy that ship and the crew do not present a danger to those on board or be an unreasonable threat of harm to the marine environment. The port state control officer will see what all documents are available on board and then evaluate if that is enough. If it is not, then the ship is subjected to certain restrictions as is necessary to obtain comparable level of safety and protection of the marine environment. Now let's go through the types of inspection that may be carried out by the port state control. There are four types of inspections that can be carried out. 
initial inspection, more detailed inspection, expanded inspection, and concentrated inspection campaign. Let's understand each of them. An initial inspection consists of a visit on board a ship during which the certificates and documents listed in Annex 10 of the MOU text is checked. MOU stands for Memorandum of Understanding. And very often the survey will ask you a question like what is IOMOU? Although it's very simple when you know the answer, Indian Ocean Memorandum of Understanding. But often during the oral examination, it does not click. So just a bit of extra information. Then after the certification and documents check, there is a overall condition and hygiene check of the ship, which includes navigational bridge, accommodation and galley, deck including forecastle, cargo holds and area, engine room. These all areas must meet generally accepted international rules and standards. During the initial inspection, the old inspection reports are checked and it is verified that previous given remarks have been rectified or not, as per the time specified in the inspection report. Then the next level of inspection is called more detailed inspection. A more detailed inspection is carried out whenever there are clear grounds for believing during an inspection that the condition of the ship or of its equipment or crew does not substantially meet the relevant requirements of a relevant instrument. Clear grounds are said to exist when the port state control officer finds evidence which in his or her professional judgment warrants a more detailed inspection of the ship, its equipment or its crew. The absence of valid documents is considered a clear ground. Other examples of clear ground can be found in Annex 9, paragraph 6 of MOU text and will also be discussed in the next video. A more detailed inspection will include an in-depth examination in the areas where clear grounds were established, the areas relevant to any overriding or unexpected factors, other areas at random from the following risk areas, documentation, structural condition, water weather tight condition, emergency system, radio communication, cargo operations, fire safety, alarms, living and working condition, navigational equipment, life-saving appliances, dangerous goods, propulsion and auxiliary machinery, pollution prevention. The more detailed inspection will take account of human element covered by ILO, ISM and STCW and include operational control as appropriate. An expanded inspection is same as initial inspection but it has a wider scope. For examination purposes, all the points that you check during the more detailed inspection can be answered in this. It is generally carried out on ships that fall under higher risk category compared to the other ships. For example, for Paris MOU, the expanded inspection like oil is tankers, done for the ships which are over 15 years old and over 3000 gross tonnage. Gas and chemical tankers over 10 years old, bulk carriers over 12 years old, and passenger ships over 15 years old. Thus, an expanded inspection would require more time compared to the initial inspection. Paris MOU also requires the ship to report to the PSC before arrival if the ship falls under high risk category. And finally, the concentrated inspection campaign is something that is jointly decided by the MOUs to conduct inspection focusing on a particular area. This area could be something random or when a new requirement has entered into force to ensure that it is being complied with, they may choose this as the topic of concentrated inspection campaign. An example of CIC is the Maritime Authorities of Tokyo and Paris MOU on Port State Control launched a joint CIC on emergency system and procedures. And this particular CIC was held from 1st September 2019 to 30th November 2019 and normally CICs are held for 3 months in a year. Let's now briefly discuss the various PSC deficiency action codes. Here is a list of code. Code 10 stands for deficiency rectified. Code 15 rectify deficiency at the next port. 16 rectify deficiency within 14 days. 17 rectify deficiency before departure. 18 rectify deficiency within 3 months 30 is detainable deficiency 
कोड 40 इज नेक्स्ट पोर्ट इन्फॉर्म्ड 45 रेक्टिफाई डिटेनेबल डिफिशिएंसी एट द नेक्स्ट पोर्ट कोड 50 इज फ्लैग स्टेट और काउंसिल इन्फॉर्म्ड 55 फ्लैग स्टेट कंसल्टेड 70 रिकॉग्नाइज्ड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इन्फॉर्म्ड 85 इन्वेस्टिगेशन ऑफ कॉन्ट्रावेंशन ऑफ डिस्चार्ज प्रोविजन मारपोल कोड 99 इज अदर्स फाइनली आई समराइज फ्लैग स्टेट हैज द ओवरऑल रिस्पांसिबिलिटी टू एंश्योर compliance of its ship regarding various conventions and codes. However, the flag states cannot control and maintain the standard of the ships which are not calling its home port. Thus, port state control is established and as per the requirements of all the conventions, it has been authorized and has formed a safety net to identify the substandard ships and inform the flag state as required. There are four types of inspection in PSC, initial, more detailed, expanded and concentrated inspection campaign. PSC inspector will come for initial inspection and if he feels that the ship looks like substandard, he goes for a more detailed inspection during which he may give a deficiency using different codes for different kind of deficiencies which are detailed in the port state control procedures, assembly resolution, Triple one nine session thirty. In the next series of PSC, I'll be sharing more details about clear grounds, MOUs, what action can be taken in case of a detainable deficiency by the master, and we'll discuss more questions that will clarify every concept of PSC. I hope it was a useful video for you. If you have any feedback, suggestion, or comment, then please write down below. I thank you for watching.